The Team Never Quit podcast is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. No matter where you're at in your military career, they offer the products and resources to help you navigate your finances. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Team Never Quit podcast. Hanging out with the guys today in the studio. We got an awesome guest in store. If you haven't already, dudes, check it out. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you get your shows. How's everybody's Easter? Good. Am I a bad human being if I say that's like that's not my thing? Really? Just because I never chase a bunny around that lays eggs and well, there's a lot of people who aren't Irish, but they celebrate St. Patty's Day. But I'm Irish. But was that was the generality in the in the statement though? All right, did the kids still celebrate? Yes. Well, they got the, they did their thing. Yeah, we killed it. We crushed. You guys have a good Easter, Nick. Yes, yeah, yeah. We had a good Easter. We were out at the uh, Outer Banks, North Carolina. Outer Banks. So unintentionally planned that. That's big awesome. Easter egg hunt because we have a big Easter egg hunt. And the older the kids get, it's more, it's more like a scavenger hunt. Like we put things out in the middle of the lake. They got to swim out there and try and find that stuff. Hey, yeah, you got to do what you got to do to get those eggs. We actually did a little one. Um, we did not do it on Easter. We did it. Uh, I want to say Friday morning because we knew that we were going to be. Out and again, like we didn't even realize it was Easter when we planned the trip a couple months ago, but sure, it was good. Well, last year or so, man, everything's kind of been off center and cattywamp, so yeah. Well, we do this thing every single week where we uh have a Patreon question of the day. So, I got a new one from you guys for from Stephanie, and she says, How would you advise someone that may be near the end of their career due to health reasons and yet still have a passion for the job on how to find a new purpose and mission in life? you know, I've always, I've never bought into the fact when it, it's almost like a cultural thing or a societal thing. When you're like, they say you have a health issue, you're supposed to just quit. I was like, why does it have to do anything with anything? I mean, keep, keep, keep on, keep it on, man. Cause it goes in levels too. If you've been in a, a job for a long time and you make rank, it's kind of almost one of them deals where if you're not, if you don't move out of your position, your body will start to get beat up. So you have to turn around and start teaching that. that that's kind of the way it you work hard in one sector going up and then you pass it back down. So it's kind of always something to do in your field. Maybe not what you're doing right now. I'd say don't be scared to take yourself out of your comfort zone. If find something that you have the capabilities of do, no matter how uncomfortable it is that you're that your health conditions allow you to do and dive in like you did when you first started your career. What you got on that, Nick? Well, I was going to say, so if you're maybe wanting to switch things around, you probably had some hobbies that you've been working on you know, while you've been having your career. So maybe if you are trying to transition out, you just pick up something that's been your hobby for a while and see if that can become a little side gig or just keep doing what you like doing. Kind of like what you did. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sort of, I guess. Uh, ac accidental entrepreneur. Because yeah. there's a difference between having a lot of things to do and then having something to do. We were talking about this earlier, and uh, there is a difference. It's like what you, what you want to do is your hobby, and there's things that you have to do every day to keep you occupied. It's important to have a mix of those, I think. Yeah, don't yeah I would agree. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Don't be afraid to pivot, you know. If, you know, like you said, something in another area of your field, you know, hone in the skills of the hobbies or even just teach people like, you know, pass those skills down to the next generation. Mm -hmm. We were also talking about, I mean, you're in, we are in, in one thing so long and it's your passion. When it's time for you to rotate out, it's, it, it, there is a, a stagnant period. We're trying to find something new to do. I guess it's almost like starting back over in kindergarten and you're crawling your way back up and eventually that fire will start and you'll, you, you'll find your purpose. Yeah. Stephanie, thanks for the question. Hey, if you guys want to ask a question to the guest, the host, Check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash team never quit. You can support everything we're doing. You help us put these shows out every week, and we're very, very thankful for that. We've got a great guest in store, founder and CEO of Renaissance Periodization, a diet and fitness company, Nick Shaw. Nick and his team at RP have sold hundreds of thousands of books over the years, ranging from nutrition, training, recovery, and creating healthy habits. Nick, welcome to the show, man. Well, guys, thanks so much for having me on. It's really an honor to be here. Big fans of everything you guys do. Thank you for all that you have done and continue to do. So oddly, so odd, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for letting us do it. Th oddly enough, right. it might've been two th the end of 19 into 20. I got a buddy of mine who 
my other buddy was like, hey, have you seen Casey lately? My buddy's name's Casey. And I was like, no, what's going on? Is he sick or something? He's like, no. You, he, there, he, I don't know what's happening, but he looks amazing. So I call him. I was like, hey, man, what the hell's going on with you? And he's like, oh, I've just been you know, concentrating. I, I, I kind of felt like I was... I wasn't motivated or disciplined enough, and I, I was getting a little lazy, so I picked something, I went with it, and he sent me a picture of himself, much like you, and the picture looks like you do, the one I'm looking at you online right now, and I was like, dear <laughs> God, bro, is this a workout routine? Please tell me it's not a diet, and he was like, it is 110% the diet, and I was like, shit, what is it? And he's like, RP diet. I swear to Christ, this is what he said to me. He's like, it's called the RP diet, and I was like, Send me the link. And he sends it over. And sure enough, it was winner, winner, chicken dinner. I mean, that's how I was introduced to you. Fast forward now, I got you in the studio. So I've been waiting for this. I'm excited about this one. So let's back up before we get into the weeds about this. Can you give us a little background on yourself before we start getting into the guts? Yeah, totally. So, I mean, long story short, I've just kind of always grown up uh, more or less a gym rat. I had a brother who was four years older than me. We had one of those little rickety weight sets in our parents' basement, you know, the, the little skinny bench and you got like the sand weights. The sand weights. Oh, yeah. Yes, 100%. That was awesome. And so I see my older brother training for sport and that's how I get into it. And I just, I really love the idea that if you just really bust your ass and get after it, you can get better because I was never genetically gifted in terms of sports. But the cool thing that I realized pretty early on was that if I just outworked pretty much everyone else, I could stand a chance. And I just love that idea of really being able to push yourself and always being able to get a little bit better. So in, in fitness or sports, right, there's always a little bit more you can do. You can get a little bit faster. You can get a little bit stronger. You can do a few more reps, whatever it is. You can grow a little more muscle, whatever, whatever. But I just really always loved that idea. And uh, eventually that kind of led to me going to school for uh, kinesiology. And then I met the co-founder of RP at Michigan. Uh, we met in the weight room and I was pretty much hooked from day one. He's like, hey, you should do a powerlifting meet. I'm like, okay, done. Like, how do I do this? And that's, this was 2007 and I've been hooked ever since really. So who, who motivated you to get into the gym? Is that in your family? You got athletes in your family? Or is it one of them deals? Because you say the, the, the sandwich, you're talking about the brown and gray ones, right? With the, with, that, we kind of started out with that, too. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it was the movie. Yeah, like, uh, we watched, we grew up in, like, Gen X with Schwarzenegger and Stallone, and those guys were completely different than everybody. I mean, there, the movies that were made back then, they were realistic. I mean, you, you, you looked like you could obtain what those guys had because they were still functional. Who were some of your yeah. inspirations back then? Yeah, I mean, really, I guess, you know, my dad was always into sports too, but really, you know, brother's four years older than me. So yeah, I'm looking up to him and I see what he's doing and he's training, trying to get better for sports. And I'm like, well, I guess this is what you do. And then, so, I mean, it's actually a little bit embarrassing to say to you guys, but I actually was a cross country runner in high school. And like, that's, that's when this thing clicked for me because I was not a good runner. I, I got my butt kicked my freshman year. I was the only one that put in all the work the summer between freshman and sophomore year. I showed up sophomore year and I went from literally the worst person on the team to running with the best guys day one of practice. And that light bulb clicked for me. I'm like, well, gee, like that's the secret. You just got to outwork everyone. Duh. <laughs> to, to, I, I got to jump forward to jump back. I don't think anybody really wants to get into like the diet thing because dieting sucks. And I was talking to my buddy Casey, and he's like, you got to take this. You can't make this a diet. This has got to be a way of life. You have to transition from what you eat. and Don't do it for six months. This is just how you're going to eat from here on out. When it, At what point did you say or did you realize that you had to incorporate the nutrition aspect and the fit, fitness aspect, and when you brought that together to make what you sit on right now a million-dollar business? Yeah. I mean, so if we go back to high school, I was always a little bit of, at least aware of what I was eating, but never to like, Oh, Hey, I need specific amounts around training and all that stuff. It was really when I met my buddy uh, in college, he went on to get his PhD from East Tennessee state university studying sports physiology. It's like literally how do you make better athletes? And so we were kind of always tweaking things with ourselves, you know, trying to figure out what worked best. And we would see people that you know were bigger, stronger than us, but it didn't seem like they were doing all the right things. If you kind of look at what science suggests, they weren't really doing that. And we thought, well, huh, 
what if you take people with elite genetics and then you combine the scientific approach, like you could probably have some pretty cool athletes and pretty cool results. And so that was, I guess, when the, the light bulb really came on again, we we're like, all right, well, we need to take things a little bit more seriously. You know, you tinker around enough with stuff on yourself, some close friends and family, then you can sort of fine tune things where then you can start going out and working with clients that are actually going to pay you. So picking all this up as we went along, because back in the day, man, you just go into the gym for three hours. I mean, it's kind of like, how are you going to rewrite the scientific version of working out? Because it's been around a long time, but every year it seems to develop just like the human body does. I mean, it's up to the point to where you see some guys that are huge and they only eat, they're vegetarians, just like there's animals down here that are huge and they only eat plants. And then you have things that are down here that are big and, and or lean and they eat meat. I mean, the body type fits the diet or does, does the diet fit the body type? Or how's that work? Can you mix those up? Yeah, so there's really, I guess, a, a few key principles that you got to kind of focus on. And, and so you made a really good point. So if you look at uh, different groups of people, you know, they're kind of various diet camps, let's call it that. You know, let's take, uh, you know, keto, carnivore. Well, they eat mostly meat. They can be pretty dang healthy. And on the flip side of that, you have people that are vegans, vegetarians. They can be quite healthy. So what are the common denominators there? And when you start looking at it like that, it's like, well, there have to be some commonalities because you can have groups of people doing literally the complete opposite things. And they still have, you know, similar outcomes in terms of health and, and maybe body composition. But uh, it really kind of comes down to uh, you have to control for calories. That's sort of number one, the most important part. So if you're trying to lose weight and you're not losing weight, you're eating a little bit too much. And I know that kind of sucks to say. I mean, you nailed it. Dieting's not exactly fun. But that's kind of the first key principle. And then you start looking at little things after that that matter a little bit less and less. But really, it's kind of nailing that first one, sort of the overall calorie balance. And if you can nail that, I mean, you're, ha you're literally halfway there in terms of your nutrition program, what you need to do. Well, go a little deeper for us on that one, because when I downloaded the RP diet, because when I saw my buddy, I was like, I'm going to look like that. By the time, that's it. That's where I'm missing because I still work out. I don't work out like I did when I was in the teams, but I still work out. I'm just a 45-year-old man that can't lose my my shed, if you will. And the app itself, you don't have to work out necessarily. It creates a, a diet program, which you can just, that it'll, it'll activate your body to burn off fats, man. But I was eating like a horse. We've got a ton of incredible supporters of the show, but today's sponsor, Gabby Insurance, pretty incredible. When it comes to car and home insurance, don't we deserve better? Absolutely. I put my policy to the test. I turned to Gabby. They literally stand for get a better insurance and getting a better insurance with Gabby means a better price for the same insurance coverage. Who knew something like this existed? I want you guys to know they're the only one true comparison platform with real rates. They're going to give you apple to apple comparisons of your current coverage with 40 of the top insurance providers, companies like Progressive, Nationwide and Travelers all in one place. So check it out. You guys have absolutely got to try this. If you're happy with your insurance company, that's fine. But wouldn't you want to make sure you are paying the best amount every month? You're not, you're not spending more than you need to. Gabby Insurance is going to let you do that. You can use your current insurance information to get started. And in minutes, you'll be able to see quotes for the exact same coverage that you currently have. And it's totally free to use. That's exactly what I did. I'm actually getting a house soon. And so I used it to compare all of the options for home insurance and that peace of mind to make sure you're getting the best rate possible when making a big decision like insurance is extremely important. And you know, the cool thing for me was I was paying the best rate. So even if that's all you learn, you should absolutely do it. Just make sure because you could be saving money. Gabby customers save $961 per year on average. And Gabby's never going to sell your info. So no annoying spam or robocalls. Put your policy to the test like I did. Get a better insurance with Gabby. It's totally free to check and there's no obligations whatsoever. Go to Gabby.com slash TNQ. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash tnq one more time guys gabby.com slash tnq make sure you got the best coverage at the best rate at first yeah yeah you know totally and we get that a lot so if you're someone that's used to you know snacking throughout the day or you know maybe eat a salad for lunch but a lot of people when they say salad well that salad could have a gallon of oil on it they could have croutons and cheese so you go from a quote-unquote salad now this thing might have you know 800 calories something like that so you have to nail that calorie balance first. 
And again, you stop snacking, maybe you just eat three or four or five meals, whatever it is, you have some flexibility there, but you nail that and you just start eating lean proteins at every meal, you know, more fruits and veggies, your healthy fats, you know, avocados, olive oils, things like that, healthy carbs, you know, um, grains and rice. All of a sudden you start eating traditional healthy foods and the volume of food that you can eat seems enormous. Because one, maybe you're not drinking anymore. You're not dining out, which, you know, dining out is kind of, maybe that's coming back in now because of COVID. But for a lot of people, they, they stop doing that. And you stop snacking throughout the day. All of a sudden, you take out all these calories. You can have these pretty large meals be very filling. And if you can nail that, like you're really on the right track. Because if you're eating mostly healthy foods, you're going to be more full. You're not going to want to sort of go out and have all these snacks and, you know, quote unquote, junk food, things like that. I mean, does that play in, come into play with what you do for a living too? I mean, because the, the body types kind of fit what you do. If you go all the way back to where we were hunters and grazers, just like I mean, you got things that have to hunt and things just sit around and graze. And then you have scavengers, right? Just things that go around and eat all day, whatever they can find to, to assimilate their body type for what they do. Yeah, totally. I mean, again, you got to sort of adapt to what people want a little bit too. So it, we have this pyramid in, in our RP diet 2.0 book. So calorie balance is the number one overall thing, but there's this whole other side of the pyramid and we just call that diet adherence. So you can give somebody the perfect diet, but if they're never going to follow it, is it any good? Not really. Right. So you got to be able to tweak and be flexible in your approach. You have the overall principles. Those don't really change. We have to be a little bit flexible in your approach to meet people. I don't want to say halfway, you got to have some flexibility in there because if you're too rigid, well, people are never going to follow it. And if you never follow it, it's like having the best training program, but you never go to the gym. It but doesn't really do anything, right? It's almost when you hear the word diet. People, when they yeah. hear the word diet, that's like not eating. So you don't even want to put that in there, right? This isn't a diet. This is your meal. Or this is what this is food. <laughs> it's what we eat. Because the minute a lot of people, when they hear that, it's, it's, it's almost like the, the, the quit word. Like, oh, God, I can't eat. I got to do this regimen. As opposed to, no, man, this, we, this is how we do it. It's like, this is just what you eat. Yeah, totally. I mean, we just, I mean a diet could, could theoretically be you eat to maintain enough calories to match your activity levels. A diet in, in our world could be you're actually trying to eat to gain weight. You know, I'm sure you knew guys like that that were on a smaller side and they had a hard time gaining weight. So you technically could put them on a quote unquote diet. Well, their diet is them trying to, you know, stuff themselves because they can't gain weight. So, yeah, it's almost like I don't like the word diet, but it is just so kind of popular and mainstream that that's just it is what it is. Where did that word even There's, come from? Diet. So is it diet trying or something? I mean, what is that? That doesn't it's kind of one of them deals. As soon as you hear that word, I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. To, well, that's the other you know, thing, man. We're, we're out there battling a lot of, you know, these fads and gimmicks and, you know, because everyone wants results overnight right? It, you know, can't blame them. Everyone wants that. But at the same time, you know, that's kind of what we're battling because there's so many people out there trying to sell all that stuff. They were like, Hey, you're just not going to get results overnight. That's not how it works when it comes to nutrition and fitness. But if you have a more long-term approach, Hey, we've got the, the right way to do it. You just follow this methodology. It does. Like you guys said, it, it's not a diet. It becomes more of a lifestyle. So let's back this up. So this all kicked off while you were in college, correct? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, because you and your business partner, y'all, y'all, y'all put y'all put out a book that sold sold a few thousand copies initially, and then it was just you and you and your partner. But now your team is what? What I read, twenty PhDs, handful of nutritionists, and everybody's putting in on the algorithm in order to make this successful. Is that how that worked? Can you walk us through that? Yeah. Again, this goes back to we were just a couple of meatheads, you know, competing in bodybuilding and powerlifting, and we started working with close friends and family, and this is. Let's call it 2011. So about a decade ago, just about the time that, you know, social media was really starting to pick up, started working with more friends and family and started to grow uh, organically. We just sort of realized that we couldn't do it all ourselves. You only have so much time. So we started trying to create some digital products and create some eBooks that, that went over really well. And this was kind of another light bulb moment for us that said, Hey, how do we kind of take this one-on-one -on -one coaching model? It's like, if you guys wanted to hire me to be your coach, it's going to be a couple hundred dollars a month. Not, every, not everyone can afford that, which is unfortunate. So what do you try to do? The beauty of capitalism, the beauty of America, you take, you solve people's needs, but at the same time, you make it cheaper for everyone. And so that's what we did by creating these diet templates, which then over the years morphed into this diet app. So I mean, now, instead of you paying me, let's call it $200 a month, 
you can go sign up for this app. It's only $14.99 a month. So like now we've sort of reduced the barrier to entry. The cost really is no longer an issue for a lot of people if you're you know, interested in nutrition. No, it also teaches them too. It's something that you can learn and apply it afterwards. That's that's the best part about it. Absolutely. I mean, that's really the idea, right? It's like you don't really want to teach people just to diet for a couple of months because anyone can lose weight over a couple of months. But what do you do after? How do you maintain those results? Why can't you create habits that can last for months or years? That's really what we're after. That's what we're trying to do: educate and empower people. Really, makes them give them some longevity. Exactly. Does everybody usually do this, the 60, 90 day thing and then they just rebound? So how did this start? Because when when we were working out and the way it works is just you eat as much calories as you can, get your butt in that gym for three hours, you throw that steel around and, and do your thing. What was what was that like transitioning from? Because that's what you were. That's the way it was with you, right? When we were coming up. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That was the deal. They, if you didn't see you in the gym, you weren't in the gym. And then now it's, it's to the point to where you, you see that working out, there's two gyms. Right. There's your diet gym and then there's the with the steel or the resistance. So I guess the yeah. diet thing is like your resistance on the inside, working out the inside. How did that transition happen? Yeah. Well, so, I mean, you can work out really hard, but there's sort of a saying you can't out train a bad diet. So if you're not really at least being aware of your nutrition, I mean, you can get by if you're really gifted genetically for a while, but it's, there's going to be a point. And so we started working with a lot of high level athletes. So we had to be able to fine tune things a little bit because these people are training, like you said, four or five hours a day, let's call it, if you're you know, CrossFit Games champions. And so you have to be able to fine tune and tweak things. And that's where, you know, really my colleague having the, the PhD and really studying like, hey, what does science have to tell us? That's when we were able to take some of these more subtleties, start applying it to ourselves, see what works, see what didn't work. Then we could go out there and apply it to clients, apply it to a bunch of people, again, get feedback, see what works, see what doesn't work. That's how we were kind of able to fine tune and just keep tweaking over the years our approach and methodology. Well, that's a great way to put that because there's, most people don't like to go into the gym to lift weights. But you can literally go into your kitchen, throw your food in there, let it work you out on the inside, and just sit there while it's going down. It, it, it's two, two gems of thought, right? Yeah, right. So anyone can go train for an hour or two, let's call it. But again, what are you doing the other 22 hours of the day? You could, that's much more important, right? Because two hours versus 22, which one has more, it's going to impact your results more. Well, it's probably what you're doing the rest of the day. So if you go train and work your ass off for a little bit, but then you're out there you know, just eating junk all day and just treating your body like crap. I mean, that's only going to get you so far before you kind of have to make that adjustment and go, huh, well, maybe I should kind of feel myself a little bit better. Then you're going to perform better. You're going to feel better. It's just kind of this positive feedback. Who came up with the idea and the name of the RP app? Doesn't, doesn't <laughs> really, I, and I never knew what the real name one was. I just thought it was called the RP diet until I, until recently. I, where is that? That's just, that's kind of like thin air or what? Uh, well, it's not really out of thin air. So we, uh, we wanted to kind of be the renaissance of bringing evidence-based practices back into nutrition and training versus, you know, you just kind of go into the gym or you just kind of eat whatever just because so-and-so said, hey, this is what you do. So that was part of it. And then uh, periodization is really the, the planned sequencing of phases. So maybe the best way to think about it is if you're a football player, well, you're probably not trained in the same way in the off season as you are during the actual season, right? Like you're probably changing things up. You're training harder in the off season so you can kind of peak to perform at your best during the season. At Team Never Quit, you guys know we love having remarkable stories of people who just don't quit. But unfortunately, even some of the strongest folks we know give up when it comes to getting quality sleep. We're all busy trying to be our best, but we can't forget to fuel our body and brain with the power that only a great night's sleep is going to bring you. And that's where I want to introduce Chili Sleep. They are pioneers of the original temperature regulating mattress pad. Chili Sleep is scientifically engineered to mimic the natural temperature change your body demands to fall into that deep sleep mode. I was actually talking to Morgan about this because I just got one and he was like, dude, Chili Pad, Chili Sleep, game changer when it comes to getting the best night's sleep. Tossing and turning at night, it's because your brain and body 
need to reset and reconnect with their natural rhythm. And the best way to do that is by prioritizing your sleep climate. So whether you're a hot or cold sleeper and no matter what size bed you got, Chili Sleep has a solution for you. You'll fall asleep faster. You're gonna wake up without that grogginess that comes from sleeping on a regular mattress. And for an extra layer of comfort, they also make the Chili Blanket the only weighted blanket that can also be paired with a sleep system for the ultimate sweat-free sleep. I sleep pretty warm, my girlfriend sleeps pretty cool, so having a device that allows us to both kind of get into our comfort zone without cranking down the AC to 60 degrees and freeze everyone out, having this sleep system is absolutely incredible. Adversity doesn't care how you slept the night before, but Chili Sleep does. They've worked with frontline military heroes and first responders for years, and they are passionate about giving the gift of sleep to those that gave so much for our country. You can learn more about their dedicated military, healthcare, and first responders program at chilisleep.com slash heroes. And right now, Team Never Quit, you guys can head over to chilisleep.com slash TNQ for Chili Sleep's best deal. It's available exclusively to our listeners only for a limited time. That's chili, C-H-I-L-I, sleep.com slash TNQ for a very special offer. You guys want to get a best night's sleep you want to do what Morgan's doing, Marcus is doing, and hey, I'm getting to try it out soon too, then you'll want to head over to chilisleep.com slash TNQ. Get that special offer. That's really the idea of periodization there in a nutshell. So we kind of combine. Now, that's one of those things, man. You know, that's why we just call it RP because if we go back in time to, let's call it 2011, yeah, that's because we were two meatheads. We thought that was cool and funny to do. Obviously, if we could have forecasted a decade later and be like, all right, well, you know, we're going to be decently well-known, well, we probably would not have gone with the same name, you know. It's uh, hindsight's twenty twenty there. Oh, sure, that's the best part. Yeah, absolutely, right. That's the fun part about the journey. Well, let me ask you this: so, does it, does it make a difference when someone goes into the gym to work out? Back in the day, you go in there to to, to relieve stress. You'll lift something heavy because it takes your mind off it. Then you got the athlete coming in training for strength and endurance. Somebody coming in there to to get in shape. All of that creates different workouts while they're in there. But that diet, that, that, that can change, right? It's just as important to, to have both. Yeah, yeah, totally. So you might, so let's go back to the football example. You might have some guys who need to gain weight. So you can imagine what they're going to be eating is a little bit different than someone that, you know, let's call it a lineman might need to, you know, slim down a little bit. Well, one, you don't want to be doing that during the season because it's going to impact your energy levels and performance. So hopefully... The idea is you're doing these things in the off season. Let's say you're a 300 pound lineman. You're trying to get down to 270 for the next season, you know, whatever, because maybe you're borderline starter or whatever. Well, you're, you're doing that stuff away from the season, get all that stuff done. So when the season comes around, you're able to perform at your best. So yeah, you have to be able to, to tweak the amounts and the timing, all that stuff around individual athletes or, you know, a normal general person that just wants to lose weight have to be able to kind of adjust things to their schedule, their lifestyle. So you're not uh, trying to fit, uh, what is it? A uh, square peg into a round hole. Yeah, exactly. I was going to ask you that too, that, that whole analogy. So there are body types that won't morph into another one. And even if you do work hard enough to get it in there, it won't stay unless you continually beat it down to keep it like that. It'll, it'll want to shift back. That's why there's different sizes, different heights and everything in between. Yeah, a little bit. You know, people have the individual differences in metabolism. Certainly for some people, it's a little bit harder to lose weight. But, uh, you know, at the same time, you know, these overall principles still apply. It might just be a little bit harder, but uh, I don't, you know, it's definitely not impossible to make some changes. But if you have a little skinny, you know, a skinny guy, let's call it, that's trying to gain weight, I mean, he might have to eat just outrageous amounts. And I've seen it myself. I've, you know, hung out with 350 pound power lifters before. That, you know, I swear they're only eating two meals a day. And let's call it, I, I weigh, you know, at the time when I was probably 250, let's say. And I'd be eating around the clock. So there definitely is a little bit to that. But I think sometimes people want to latch onto that a little bit too much. It's, it's almost like a little bit of an excuse there. Like, oh, well, you know, I got a fast metabolism. I can't gain weight. And then you ask them what they're eating. And they're like, oh, well, you know, uh, my mom made me breakfast. And then I had a shake midday. And you're like, all right, come on, man. Like you gotta, you're not, you're not, you're not doing the part there. Don't, don't use that as too much of an excuse. Did you ever, did you guys think you would be where you are today when y'all put all this together? Absolutely not. Very easy answer. Absolutely not. So what would you tell somebody in the beginning when they're going through that? You, you can never anticipate where this is going to go. You just keep going with it, right? 
I would say be prepared to work your tail off. The idea of balance, if you're trying to start a company in the beginning, it's probably not going to exist. If you want to have balance, you might not ever make it. But uh, now I have much more balance because here we are a decade later, we've got a great team and, you know, incredible, incredibly smart people, much, much smarter than myself, you know, working for RP, doing everything behind the scenes that uh, now, you know, the idea of balance is a little bit more realistic, but yeah, there were definitely, you know, the first five, six years just working around the clock. And so you got to be prepared to do that. Make sure you have a good team and you're able to, you know, you have to know that you're not going to know everything. So you have to bring in other people to help you. You can't get caught in that trap of uh, wanting to do everything yourself. Your clientele list is amazing. I mean, you've been doing this for a while, which congratulations, growing this from something hey. that, something from into the gym to taking it, you know, open it up to everybody else. What, what, when you look back on it, there's got to be some of those times, some of the ones you were training, the, the, that obstacle in itself, like that, that, that grin you get, right? You know, there's one in your head. You're like, man, this, I didn't even think I was, we were going to get through this training scenario, but it's, uh, those are the greatest rewards, right? Yeah. I mean, I remember the first time I, I wrote a nutrition program for, you know, a CrossFit game champion. I was like, oh, am I really doing this? Like, this is pretty cool. Now, again, you know, people might only see that like, oh, you know, he got lucky or whatever, whatever, but they don't see the, you know, six, seven years before that, that took kind of all this work building up to it. But uh, yeah, it is pretty cool. You know, we will work with someone, uh, you know, like Rich Froning, who's basically the Michael Jordan of CrossFit. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, and just, you know, really going back to the idea of hard work and work ethic, it, it's really astounding just how much work and how hard these top guys can push, push themselves. And I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here, you know, you guys know all about that, but it really is something to see firsthand. It's amazing how if we'd have had nutrition is a, a very much a part of our community or our previous community now, but when we came in was not, you always wonder how much better we would have performed if there would have, if we had somebody like you, tailing us around saying, Hey, look, in order to perform at optimal level, you're going to have to put this into your body instead of drinking beer and eating pizza all the time. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I got a real quick funny story. So, uh, you know, Dan Luna, a good friend of your guys has inter oh, yeah. introduced us. Uh, he was telling a story about when he was getting ready for buds, he was eating Jack in the box oh, like, uh, all the time. Yeah. Eat any, anything you get in your body, when, especially when you're going through training. You just work so hard, it doesn't matter. You, I mean, you burn it so fast. It, it, the one thing about when we come out of SEAL training is usually our weight's off only about 20 pounds, and that's because of body types. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, that really goes back to the idea of calorie balance. How many thousands of calories are you guys burning during budge training? You have to literally eat anything in sight because you have to get in the sheer number of calories any means possible. Yeah. You know, that's why you're running down the beach eating pizza and, <clears throat> you know, chugging it is whatever, because you're literally burning so much that if you weren't doing that, if you were trying to eat quote unquote only healthy foods, you'd never stand a chance. Mm. So the, the, the funny story is Dan said that, you know, he shows up day one of Bud's, he's the only guy with a little bit of a belly. So he's looking around, he's like, oh man, I probably don't stand a chance, but it probably actually worked to his advantage because as you said, you lose 15 to 20 pounds when you go through the training. So at the end, he comes out chiseled because he had a little bit of room to work with. I just thought that was always funny. I'll tell you what, he had a little bit of an advantage too because of that. When, having that, the water's so damn cold. Having that little insulation was good stuff. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Hug up on him. Right? Hey, like, get over here. There, we had one other guy that was like that. He was back to my swim buddy, Tyler Black. He's since passed. But, oh, yeah, they had fun with us on that. That's one of the biggest things. So let me ask you a question. As you were going through this and, and you – and developing this program, there had to be a time when you cut loose from one thing to step in. It's, it's a narrative we hear from a lot of people who are very, very successful. They're just like, man, my, you know, my never quit moment was like an everyday thing, but there was a time where it's kind of like, Hey, I got to go into this full bore and, and the overall learning process because of how smart it is now, as opposed to when we started that whole thing. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it was always just really, um, it kind of goes back to that uh, lifting fitness mentality of applying that to business of, all right, well, here we are. How can we do a little bit more? How can we get a little bit better? And you just keep applying that over time. <clears throat> and that's a really good approach because, you know, for example, with our diet templates, well, we just kept iterating them over time to, you know, version 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. And then the same principles still apply to the app now. It's like we're constantly updating things. So you always have this process of, you know, let's get something out there. Let's see what people think of it. Let's get their feedback. Let's adjust. 
Let's iterate. Let's get the next model out there. Give it back to people. See what they think. You just keep getting that feedback. Like there's there's always something more to strive for. So I think that's always been the cool idea or approach for me is you know fitness really applies to business. And there's kind of these over overriding principles that you can apply to more or less everything in life. That's a great analogy. But basically, just like in the gym, you got to go in every day and put work in. If you don't, it won't, you won't grow. Yeah, absolutely. Same way with the business. Yep, so, and you know you can't be a, can't be too afraid to to fail and mess up. Uh, you got to kind of do that a little bit. You know, take some lumps and got to learn from it. Get that feedback. Keep improving. You got to have that mindset uh, all the time. Just how do you get better? How do you do more? How do you keep getting better? Just keep doing that. Uh, I started a, a small company in 2019, September 11, 2019. COVID hit and literally I just fail every single day, no matter phone calls, interviews, whatever, never, ever got a win, which is challenging for someone like you, somebody like us who usually has worked so hard just to win all the time and just lose, 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 which I'm sure you said that you just said it in your, when you started this business, there's just a series of losses. And then there's that one win that, that lights that flame. And then you just carry on. That's that had to have happened to you, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so I guess it really depends on how far back you want to go, but I can pinpoint, you know, at least one thing where I randomly reached out to this uh, you know, website that was pretty popular in strength sports at the time. And I was like, hey, can we write an article for you? And no one had really ever heard of us before then. So we write an article for that. People immediately resonate with it. And you know, fast forward six months, a year later. You know, that's where we're selling our first ever ebook. So again, like you have to be able to take some of that early success and momentum, be able to carry it on and keep growing from that because it's really funny in order to be successful. It usually does. Like you guys have said, it takes this little hint of success at some point to kind of spark that. And then you have to capitalize on that. You have to use that momentum to keep going along with it in order to keep, uh, you know, growing and improving. Was there ever a time that you thought this was just two guys bullshitting in the gym about an idea that it would never go anywhere? Uh, yeah, many, many days <laughs> early on, absolutely. Uh, almost every day. So, uh, I actually remember people that we worked with, they used to make fun of us all the time because we were intentionally massing, you know, like trying to gain some weight. And so we weren't very lean and we used to get made fun of, uh, me and my buddy, the co-founder, and they used to kind of make fun of us because we were overweight and like, Oh, you can't be a personal trainer. You can't do this. But we were like, it's part of a long-term process. You have to see the bigger picture. And, you know, fast forward a couple of years later, you know, these, these same people are actually coming back to us asking for advice. So it's kind of one of these things that comes back full circle. But absolutely. I remember every single day people would make fun of us because they just, they didn't see the, the long-term, they didn't have the long-term time horizon. They weren't able to think, uh, you know, five years down the road instead of, you know, five minutes down the road. Well, going into the gym, you go in there every day knowing you're going to get your ass kicked. It's a thing. You only get, you only get recognized by somebody else. For all the hard yeah. work, usually, right? It's just kind of like going into business. You're going in there every day knowing you're going to get your ass kicked. And then one day somebody else say, hey, good job. Right? Same principle. I mean, totally, it's, it's right? pretty it's like, simple yeah, and it's, it's like, dynamic, yeah. right? It's like, oh, I purposely go in. You like you purposely go in there to make your muscles hurt and get your ass kicked? Yeah. That's what business is, too. Every day you got to yes, go sir. in and put the work in. Sign me up for that every time. It's like the, uh, the motivational poster, the little iceberg. You, know, you only see the, the, the tip of it. You only see the top the end results, but you don't see all the crap underneath it. What, um, with everything that you've accomplished in your life, this, you know, our podcast is about an individual's never quit story. You got one that uh, resonates more than one of the others. Yeah, absolutely. So I can give some backstory of 2020. I mean, Please. 2020 was a, a real crappy year for, for our family. Yeah, in nuts. They were, that's why the, the Z, double zero years, that's right. They're always nuts. <laughs> This episode of the podcast brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union at Navy Federal Credit Union. They don't just serve the Navy. You know it already. They serve the Army, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, Coast Guard, and even the all-new Space Force. No matter where you're at in your military career, they're going to offer you the products and resources you need to help navigate your finances like this. The Navy Federal More Rewards American Express card, which offers three times the point at supermarkets, food delivery and gas, plus one point on everything else. That means Grubhub, DoorDash, or whatever your favorite food service is, you're going to be able to enjoy special perks and points you can redeem for cash, travel, gift cards, and much more. Plus, earn bonus points. Learn more about how you can get 25 
thousand points. That's a two hundred and fifty dollar value when you open a Navy Federal More Rewards American Express card today. American Express is a registered service mark of American Express, used by Navy Federal under license. You guys should check them out. Visit NavyFederal.org for more details and to apply. Make sure you support Navy Federal because they are always taking care of us. Navy Federal is insured by NCUA. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there you go. So five days of January 2020, the year has just started. Five days before my uh, son's eighth birthday party, my wife is diagnosed with a pretty aggressive form of breast cancer. So, you know, that's, that's pretty bad by itself. Fast forward a couple of weeks. She has surgery in February some complications from that. She's actually, you know, stuck in the hospital for about a week. Uh, uh, Valentine's day, 2020, we spent in the hospital. That was fun. Got to sleep on the, you know, the little, little couch there little, in the, the room. real comfortable couch and on the side right there. Was it blue or brown? <laughs> uh, who knows at this point? I don't know. I think the blue ones blue. are less comfortable than the brown ones. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. And so let's fast forward to March, 2020. So my wife starts chemo. I was able to go with her to the first chemotherapy session. And then what happens about a week after that? Well, COVID hits, right? The world has just turned literally upside down. No one knows what's going to happen. And literally, you know, people think it's the end of the world. So we're dealing with all this. I'm not allowed to go with my wife anymore to chemo. She has to drive by herself because they're not allowing anyone in the building, just the people that were going for treatment. So we have all this. On top of that, so I have an eight-year-old son. Uh, my daughter was going to turn six uh, last year, last March. So we have all that. And they're now homeschooled. And on top of that, you know, running a business with, you know, 50 people that, that work for RP. So it's like, it, just, it was just incredible snowball of effects that it really seemed like life could not possibly get any worse. And then you throw in, because we had to take the quarantine and then COVID very seriously because my wife's going through chemo. Again, this is, let's call it March, April last year. No one really knew. Like we literally thought COVID could have been the end of the world. Uh, You know, thankfully it maybe turned out not as bad as as people had originally thought. And so it's just, it was dealing with all this stuff. It was really, really hard to kind of figure out what next to do. And I'm just like a, I'm an avid reader. I'm pretty big nerd. And so I'd been thinking about all these things, all these commonalities, and we've talked a, a little bit about them. Like what are, what do successful people do? And it's not just business. It's not just fitness. It's not just whatever, you know, overcoming adversity, but there are these common principles that people have in common that successful people share. And so it's one thing to sort of talk about them, but then you take everything that has happened in the span of three months, basically you cram it all in there. And it's entirely different idea to, to really live these principles each and every day. And that's what really 2020 forced me to do, force my wife to do. I mean, she's a warrior, way stronger than me, of course. And then it, it really just was an eye-opening experience for me. Is like, well, you really have to truly live and breathe these principles every single day because there's so much crap going on. And how's she doing? Uh, she is doing very well. Thank you for asking. She uh, she finished treatment in uh, in August. Oh, good. Yeah, we'll be praying for her. Let me ask you a question. As she was going through that, did, did she's, she's obviously on the diet program. Did, did y'all shift her diet or did you create something for that kind of workout? Cause that's what, it, when my mom went through it, I explained it to her like this. I was like, mom, pain is pain. I was like, it's to mid how you look at it. I was like, when we go into the gym, we work out real hard, chest real hard. The next few days, it feels like a chest is being ripped out, but we're laying there thinking it's awesome. Like, yeah, cause I'm growing. I was like, we're going to put you under the knife. We're going to work, work it out real hard for, Overnight, and then you're going to be sore for a, for a week. And then she she went through that too, and we shifted that pain scale. But also did with the diet. Did y'all change that? Yeah, it's a really interesting one, um, man. There's just a lot of uh, no one really knows for sure. And so when you're going through chemo, you have all these drugs in your system. It uh, sometimes it's just really hard to even have an appetite. So really, it's kind of listening to what the doctors had said and just be you just got to kind of eat. And some days you might feel like eating a lot. Some days you might not feel like eating much. So it's one of those things we didn't want to have an additional stress on top of that when she's already going through this. And it's, uh, you know, quarantine pandemic and she's trying to homeschool our kids. I'm trying to homeschool our kids. So we weren't really too uh, strict with anything nutrition wise during then. It was just sort of how do you get through the next day? How do you get through the next week? 
That's interesting. Yeah, I'd been curious to see uh, if that's there was interesting. something yeah, specific I, I, that you could have. I think I think there's everybody wants to know if there's a specific diet that will address a certain cancer or cancer in general. Because just like you said, when you're beat down, your body sometimes it feels it wants something salty or sweet, and it kind of changes what what you can eat, and that's in the, its worst beat down form. And we come out of the gym sometimes, you're like, man, I want to go eat this, but you, or your body wants to eat that, but you're like, no, I got to go. And just, I'm just curious as to the, the correlation between the two. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's really tough to say because, you know, sometimes you might just feel nauseous, right, from, from all these medicines or actually even t- changes your taste buds around. So, you know, my wife would be trying to eat some stuff and she's just like, this doesn't taste like normal. This, this doesn't taste like anything. You know, she could be eating a delicious dessert and she's like, I, I don't literally taste anything. It's like oh. nothing's there. So it, um, again, it just goes back to, I think some of the basics, you just try to eat, you know, healthy. We have to be able to adapt during that and just have some of that flexibility and not, and not be too strict because you don't want to. Today's episode of the show brought to you by athletic greens, the most comprehensive daily nutritional beverage on the planet. You guys should check them out with so many stressors in life. You guys know it can be difficult to maintain effective nutritional habits and maybe give your body the nutrients it needs to thrive. All right, you got a busy schedule, maybe you're getting poor sleep or exercise, or you're probably just not eating the best kind of food your body is needing, and that is where Athletic Greens helps. Their daily all-in-one superfood powder is your nutritional essential. It is by far one of the easiest nutritional habits that you can add to your health routine today. Athletic Greens contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients, including a multivitamin, a multimineral, a probiotic, green superfood blend, and more that are all going to work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet. They're going to help increase energy and focus, aid with digestion, and help you support a healthy immune system. Best of all, without the need to take multiple products, meaning you're not going to have this huge cabinet full of all of the things that I just mentioned. All you guys have to do is take that one scoop, put it in your favorite beverage, shake it up, and enjoy all the benefits that you're going to get. And it's lifestyle friendly. So whether you're doing keto, paleo, maybe you're vegan, dairy-free or gluten-free, it contains less than one gram of sugar and it doesn't compromise on taste. And right now, Athletic Greens, they're doubling down on supporting your immune system during the winter months. They're offering you guys a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you guys need to do is visit our link. You'll basically never have to buy vitamin D again. Visit athleticgreens.com slash TNQ and join all of us at Team Never Quit who are making that commitment to be healthier. Again, just visit athleticgreens.com slash TNQ. You're going to get your free year supply of vitamin D and those five free travel packs today. If you're looking to be the healthiest version of yourself and you don't want to clutter the cabinet with all those products, then take advantage of Athletic Greens. One more time, guys, athleticgreens.com slash TNQ. You know, be too rigid and kind of add that uh, additional stress when you're already under so much of it. Is that something, I don't remember seeing this on the R- when I was doing the RP diet, <clears throat> is that something like, they, as far as expansion goes, there would be a tab on the RP diet that, hey, if you're a diabetic, we recommend here. If you have, if you're in chemotherapy, we recommend this. And just maybe expanding your portfolio. I don't think anybody's doing that, actually, now that, now that, I, that I kind of... Um, yeah. So, I mean, we have uh, some registered dietitians on staff that can work with people that, you know, might be diabetic type one or type two or, uh, have things like PCOS or hypothyroidism. So, uh, you know, the app kind of has some limitations in that it can't help, uh, people that have medical conditions because you have know, medical conditions, it really does require a little bit more in-depth approach. You have to be a little bit more careful with things. Probably want to work with someone that's trained in that, those areas, like a registered dietitian. Or somebody who's going through it. Ain't nobody yeah. better than somebody's had to, had, had to go through because it's those little tricks, right? It's like, hey, you know, you know, you eat this, you eat this, you eat this, but oh, I, I was as I was having this feeling, I'm, I I mixed my, my my water with this, this kind of drink with orange, and man, it, it helped me out or something. You know what I'm talking about? It's like those little. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. always the outlines, but then when we when you splice those together, what it creates is that little hybrid moment, and and when you those those usually we we keep for ourselves. Those are the best parts. Yeah, I told you, I mean, one piece of advice was uh, from a colleague's uh, mother is she enjoyed uh, peppermint ice cream. Yep. That kind of stuff. Exactly. Yep. Whatever that was. I've heard some stories, too, and they're like, you did what? And like, I don't know why. My body was just like, you have to have this. <laughs> it's an yeah, amazing yeah. machine. You just sometimes just got to do what you got to do to just get through it. So coming from coming up the hard way. And all the adversity in 2020, you're a success, a extremely successful businessman and 
million dollar. You're on Forbes magazine. I thought that was really cool. That's something to strive for for myself. How, how'd that come about? They reach out to you or did you? Uh, so there's a lady that uh, specialized in writing about um, single person entrepreneurs. Uh-huh. Yeah. So really it's just like, you know, one person that kind of, you know, runs the company, but it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit misleading there. And, you know, I kind of hate that because then it seems like, you know, I've done everything and that's absolutely not the case yeah, because we just have a lot of consultants that, uh, that work for RP. So she specialized in that, she wrote a book on it actually. Um, so she, she had just kind of reached out and I got to you know do a little article on there and uh, was included a little bit in the book. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit misleading. I don't want to take too much credit there because <laughs> you know, it's not like a single person. Thing. Uh, it's really, she did a great that. job on the article though. So what's next? Uh, we see the, you got, you know, you got a book out fit for success. Where's, where are you, <clears throat> where's RP headed? Yeah. So, um, again, th- this book sort of encompasses a lot of things that we talked about in terms of just the overriding principles that make people successful. And just given that, um, 2020 was such a crappy year for so many people, I knew there was going to be a way to help people. That's why I wanted to get it out last year. So the cool thing for me about this book is that we have a lot of books on nutrition, on training, on recovery, but we really didn't have anything that stepped outside of the fitness realm a little bit, whereas this encompasses a bit more mindset of, you know, how do you overcome adversity and obstacles? And so that, that for me was a really cool thing to get out there. But, um, you know, what's next for RP? Well, hey, we're just going to keep getting a little bit better each and every single day. So we'll keep making the app a little bit better. We'll keep adding to it. We'll keep using customer feedback and just keep improving and getting better. I mean, that's really the end of the day, it's kind of a boring thing to say, but it's, it's really the, that's the honest answer. Um, I got one for you. What would you, if you could tell yourself something yesterday and tell yourself something when you were all the way back fixing to start this, I mean, we've learned this up to this point. I mean, those, there are those little valuable nuggets. The wisdom usually comes in short ones, right? But the, the overall conversation, man, we hear work harder than everybody else, overcoming your obstacles, man, kind of setting up. And, it, and that's the thing with, with successful people. It's not a bunch of things that they have to do. It's just a few of them. It's just, you need to do those. But what one of the things you'd be telling yourself? I would have prioritized, uh, you know, reading self-education a lot more early on. So yeah, nobody wants that to short. do that. That's a terrible idea. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. Yeah, it's just so for me, it was I was so caught up in the day to day of of running the business that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'd just be tired, you know, just just working literally all day long, answering stuff, running around, you know, we got two small kids, whatever, whatever. And so I just didn't take that time to really prioritize, like, you know, learning more, because here we are fast forward, I'm able to step back a little bit in the business. and And now, you know, I'm more of like a management leadership type position. Whereas before I was literally, you know, my hands were in the day-to-day business activities every single day. So it's a really weird transition to, to make that. And so I would have prioritized learning and reading more about that early on because when, when it, uh, when that transition happened, I was kind of like, boy, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So you know, that's where all the reading and learning and, you know, again, talking to people that are you know, much more successful than myself and just trying to learn what they did and take their experiences and get better. You know, that's, I'm glad you said it that way. Cause that's the difference between being an entrepreneur and going out on your own and then joining a corporation where they have a senior leadership or elders there. They can c- coach you. It's like, Hey, cause that is the hardest part of the transition from when you're in there busting your butt and you rotate out to do the management deal. N- none of us like that. If you, if we worked hard in the field, it's, it's tough. 100%. And, and that pretty much goes with everyone that I've talked to that, uh, you know, has been able to grow the company because I, I like doing stuff. I, I, like, you know, I want to be there. I want to be helping. I want to do stuff. And you kind of have to take a step back because people probably do a better job than you. It's one, it's a tough pill to swallow, but at the same time, it's also necessary if you want to keep uh, growing and improving. I'm learning That's that right now. Advice. Yeah. I'm learning That's that right now. I'd rather be on the ladder wearing hard hat and steel toe. And they're like, well, who's going to run the business if you're doing that? Who's going to be chasing opportunity? hundred percent. And when that transition happens, that it happens different for everybody. That's that, and you never. That's the craziest part about it. You'll know. You'll know exactly when it's supposed to happen because something will start to fail on one side or the other. So you're either going to say, "I have to move into this lane," or stay in this lane, and we're not going anywhere. Yeah, totally. I mean, it was getting to the point where my wife and I were almost getting burned out because every single day we were answering every single email, every single message that was coming in. And you can only do that for so long. I mean, we had two small kids, you know, this is 
handful of years ago. So when you have kids that are you know, toddlers, that's a full-time job. And then you throw in a full-time job of an actual company. And yeah, that's actually when I started uh, or when I stopped competing. Because I was like, I can't do this. You know, competing is a full-time job as well. I'm like, I can't do three full-time jobs. Like something has to give. And so the trade-off was, well, you know what? Instead of trying to compete for little plastic trophies that uh, you actually have to pay for, eh, maybe it's better to prioritize family and, uh, you know, the, the business. And that's an honorable thing. It's, it's tough to, to, one thing you built, you love, and then you built your hobby, your body kind of growing up, which one, but the fact that you have all these people working for you, I mean, giving them a chance for success, that's, that's something, man. Good on you. How did, how can everybody find you, follow you? And what do you got coming up? Uh, probably the easiest way is uh, at RP strength on Instagram, uh, myself personally at nick.shaw.rp. And uh, yeah, if anyone wants to check out the book, just grab it on Amazon. So you want to give a uh, shout out to your, uh, yeah. want to shout out your podcast? Yeah. RP strength podcast. Uh, it's really for a lot of people that are, you know, doing the RP program, RP methodology. Uh, you know, again, we, we just got this incredible team of really smart folks and you know, a lot of incredible athletes. So we have them on sort of inter interview them, see what they have to say. Cause again, you can learn so much from really successful people. So if you sit back and listen, you're probably, probably going to learn a lot. Yeah. We're going to blast this out to everybody in our, uh, in our crew and in our team, man. We'll yeah. Make sure that they find out about you. Hey, well, get, yeah, guys. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. No, yeah, thank you, brother. Yeah. Congratulations, Best of the misses, man. Tell yeah. yeah. Keep us posted on. We'll check in with you, man. Once we got you, we got a whole file on you, man. Once you make it to the team, you're in there. So. Well, uh, well, you know, because Mojo want to go back and forth about Michigan all day long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just looking forward to the day I can, you know, kind of, I can finally get down there and maybe hang out sometime. Come you on. ain't gonna believe it. Yeah, gates open. Bro, it's, it, you'll you'll like it down here. Bring the whole family. It's it's a uh, it's something. I love that. But thank you again, brother. Thank you. God bless, buddy. Be good. Hey, thank you guys for listening to another episode of the podcast. Let us know what you think. You can follow us on social media, teamneverquit.com slash social. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, CastBox, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you haven't, make sure to check us out on Patreon for exclusive access to bonus content and videos. Thanks again, Nick. See you guys next week. <laughs>